Yeah, that's a very interesting question. So um, I think that there is a lot going on with RISC-V right now. And it is a very interesting architecture because it's open source. If we compare with uh, x86 or with ARM, uh, it's much cheaper to develop with it because you don't have to pay any licenses. And uh, I think that there is a lot of projects uh, going on out there. So RISC-V is growing a lot every year. It's projected to grow 30% a year up until 2027. Um, and if we look out there in the market, we can find already a lot of uh, embedded compute uh, modules, for instance, a lot of smaller companies are using to develop microcontrollers um, and low cost microcontrollers with it. And I think that the adoption in the future um, on a much more broader uh, way uh, will be enabled when companies, bigger companies, are also adopting it for their architecture. So if we look out there right now, ARM is still the dominant one uh, for processing today, um, for mobile applications, for instance. And I think that this will change a lot when RISC-V is being considered by those companies as well. Yeah, I think RISC-V is closer to ARM in that regard because it uses the RISC architecture, which is a reduced instruction set uh, architecture. And uh, I think it can operate uh, more on the side of efficiency then and reduced power consumption in comparison with the Intel uh, x86 architecture, which is more complex. It follows the CISC architecture, but it can perform then um, more complex uh, instructions in less time. Um, so risk is actually on the side of ARM, lower consumption, and it has also a very uh, customizable uh, instruction set that also makes it attractive long term for, you know, for very specialized applications. And I think this is one of the powers of uh, RISC-V as well in the future. Yeah, so um, I think risk, this is one of the main advantages of RISC-V being an open source architecture. That means the companies developing a microcontroller or microprocessor using this architecture, they don't have to pay licensing fees like they do actually for ARM or uh, in case for Intel as well. So, and uh, this gives a lot of flexibility to companies then developing microcontrollers with RISC-V because they have on one side the flexibility of changing the instruction set the way they need. They can optimize this for performance or for power consumption, for instance. And of course, that makes it cheaper because they don't have to pay the percentage over usually the, the final product that is sold then, uh, you know, to manufacturers of equipment. They don't have to pay a percentage of that uh, back to any institution. So this is, a, this is a very big cost usually on the development of new microcontrollers and, uh, and new microprocessors. And this enables microprocessors and equipment, actually consumer equipment, to be cheaper in the end. So I think this benefits in the end, um, you know, the, the creation of new and smarter products and makes also more accessible for the population. Yeah, I think that, um, so the Celos Design Platform can support engineers on the component selection in the end. And one of the things that we take into consideration when selecting new microcontrollers or processors is really the architecture. So do you need a more complex architecture or do you need a, can you work with a simpler architecture that is more focused on efficiency and power consumption? And those things are things that the Silos Design Platform can take into consideration as well. So if an engineer is looking for developing a new smart application or a new IoT device, for instance, uh, and they need to select then a microcontroller or processor for this application, we can help them identifying what is the best architecture for their design so that they can achieve their design goals uh, in a confident way. Mm -hmm.